Hey guys, we're back for part two. Um, in part one, we told you that we would do just a, a quick 30 minute outline. And uh, now we're back with part two. She's gonna go with a pen and kind of shade everything in and make it look more realistic. Uh, she did say that um, she wished she had some markers or some something to color it in uh, to make it look just really pop. But uh, anyways, uh, we're going to let her go ahead and get started with the pen. And thanks for watching part two. Okay. <clears throat> Sometimes the best pens are the simple pens, the cheap ones. I've noticed with Disney, a lot of their lines go skinny to thick to skinny again. So I go back over them, make it skinny to thick to skinny. Just gives it some depth. Like I said, oh, like we were talking about. In the last video, I grew up drawing with pen and pencils, so this is kind of my bread and butter. <laughs> drawing with these type of things. It's pretty crazy because you don't see a lot of people just using everyday materials. This is a good pen. Yeah, that's my favorite pen to write with. You can get really light little strokes with it, or you can go like push harder and get more of a de defined line. Pretty good. It cracks me up just to watch her draw because half the time I don't even see the marks that she's making because they're so light. But when she's done, it's, it's pretty amazing because the way that she shades her hair, you can definitely see that the way that she's highlighted it, uh, that it looks shiny and in certain spots. I, I know that sounds crazy, but it... It does. It really, it really looks like the hair is shining because of the way that she's highlighted it. That's the idea. I need to erase some of the pencil off. I have to be careful when I'm erasing to not smear the ink of the pen I just put on there. Done that before. Oh, it makes me so mad when I do that. I like to go back in and add these little streak lines to kind of give it the illusion of hair strands, individual strands. So many people draw like individual hairs when they draw their people and that just looks like strings hanging from people's heads. But really it's about like creating a shape and then going back in and doing like highlights and lowlights to give it 
the look of hair. Looks more realistic. You always want the shiny part to be where your light source is hitting it, obviously. So how long have you been drawing? Since I could hold a pencil. <laughs> I've always loved to draw. I wouldn't go anywhere without a pencil and pen. Or I mean, pencil and notepad, or a pen and notepad. If I forgot it, I'd be like, Mom, we have to turn around. I love my notebook. What's your favorite things to draw? Disney princesses when I was a kid. Hmm. That's about all I wanted to watch, too. But um, I like to draw animals and things, too. I leave these little circles of white in her eyes, in her pupils, to show like the light glistening in her eyes. That really makes the eyes look alive. That little twinkle in her eyes. I would have tried filling that in, and it would have looked like she was a demon with black eyes. <laughs> Okay. Isn't that crazy how the hair is already, it's like it's alive. Me and her went to a uh, an antique store yesterday, and uh, we met a lady who had uh, just published a children's book, and she was talking to us about um, the book and everything, and and uh, that a 16 year old kid did the illustrations, and uh, I, I told her that uh, I told the lady that how good of a drawer that Whitney is and uh, Whitney pulled out a picture of a character she drew on her phone and the lady flipped out and was super impressed and got her number and uh, said she might be using me to draw some illustrations so hey I thought hey if we can do that might as well make a YouTube video because I know there's a lot of you out there that love to draw I know as a kid I love to draw but I wasn't no good. 
No one's one of them things that if people put enough time into it, they can do it. It takes a lot of practice. And a lot of time. I like watching TV when I was a kid and watching Bob Ross draw uh, landscape pictures mm -hmm. and then trying to do it yourself. It's yeah, he makes it look so easy. We're just going to put a little happy tree over here. doesn't matter where you put them. It's your picture. You can do what you want. Yeah, yeah. My picture looks like slobber. <laughs> I like to paint it, but that is not Bob Ross level by any means. That's because I spent most of my time drawing and not painting. <laughs> You ever do any charcoal? Not a whole lot. I've done some. It's harder to control charcoal. More of a graphite girl. Just because that's what I've always used. But like I said, if you practice, you can get better at it. This uh, pen has a blue tinge to it. I thought it was black at first. Blue. Nothing wrong with that. I kind of like it blue, actually. Because being that it's a sea creature we're drawing, it makes sense. Who drew one of the X Men? Or what? What's the cre The woman the the woman that's blue. Oh, Mystique. Oh yeah, the hot one. <laughs> I've never known of a non-hot like superhero before though. Well, I guess um, on the Fantastic Four, the guy that looks like a big rock. I guess he's not. Technically hot. That is true. <laughs> or the Hulk. Yeah, he's not that hot either. But female wise, they usually always do unattractive female. I love how Disney always tries to make these uh, characters so perfect. You know, if this was real world, one of our boobs would be bigger than the other. Just saying. <laughs> You're funny. <clears throat> She'd have cellulite in her fan, too. That's true. <laughs> uh, that would be odd. Okay.
ought to get a red pen and let you draw the lobster or crab. What was he? Seb Sebastian? Sebastian the crab. Oreo. Ursula would be fun to draw, but I'd have to probably practice drawing her. I've not really drawn her before. I think she's the coolest of all the Disney villains, though. And she was not afraid of her curves. Ursula got back. First we got back, front, and all the above. I think she's the one who invented the underwater twerk, too. Wow. <laughs> get into a drawing mood I get into this zone and I just can't get out of it till I'm done drawing <laughs> Okay. I'm to put out a little bit of blobs here and there. Well, if you get a smear, do they make a an eraser for a pen? Nah. No. It's do or die with pen. Do or die. Risky business trying to shave his pen. <laughs> huh? I gotta say, she has a pretty neck. I know if I had a child drawing this, it would have looked like Rosie O'Donnell's neck. <laughs> that would have been funny. My hair would have uh, looked like Whoopi Goldberg. <laughs> I would have pretty much drawn the whole cast of the view. had a red marker, it would have been destroyed for Joy Behar's hair. That is true.
Yeah, 20 minutes. The oh, part wow. part one was right at like 29 minutes. And so, you know. I guess I'm going to probably be about the same. Yeah. And that's a lot of detail for an hour. Yeah. It is. I mean, that's a lot of pin strokes. Yes. I mean, just to be sitting here doing it from looking at a picture on your phone and your phone going off every minute, you yeah, know. I haven't even looked at the picture since I started shading it. Hmm. <laughs> I'm just shading it based on what I... You know, feel what it should, it, it should look like. I just used the picture so I could get the basic drawing done. Do you believe you could have drew that from just memory? Maybe. I didn't want to do it for this video. So I was afraid I wouldn't be able to do it just right. <laughs> yeah, maybe. She's being modest, folks. I guarantee you she could have done it from memory. I could have came pretty darn close. hair it's so awesome I love how in the movie it just kind of moves like it's a character all its own a lot of times like with um, Cinderella her hair was up and it was mostly just like a knot on her head it didn't really do anything but in the little mermaid her hair moved and sway whichever way because of the water hmm. so I like that it's not easy to animate I'm sure I'm not big on animation myself, but I was a big fan of the movie Ted. <laughs> yeah. He was a naughty little bear <laughs> with a potty mouth. Sure was funny. <laughs> yeah. Sorry if I scooted this out of frame. I'm trying not to do that. <laughs> hmm. There's her hair. And now, almost. Okay. Almost there. <laughs> okay. I feels pretty good for her hair. And now for her tail. Drawing that tail reminds me of that movie, 
that I seen when I was a kid. I've seen it probably, gosh, a couple dozen times. Um, I think it's called Splash. Yeah. With Daryl Hannah and Tom mm -hmm. Hanks. Yeah. It was a good movie. I'm not sure what it was. Did that come out before The Little Mermaid? Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm it pretty sure. The 80s, and this came out in, I think, 87. Hmm. Could be wrong. I always wondered why they didn't give her scales, but I think it's because when you're drawing someone in motion, having to animate that with all the scales on it and stuff would have been hard. It would have been too busy or something. It would have been just too hard to keep, you know, as the tail moves throughout the movie, having to make sure you have all those scales moving in the right, you know, direction and whatnot. So I think it's a lot of, to do with her ear too. She, they always kind of kept her ear covered up. And I think I made a blob on there. Okay, we can hide that. But, <laughs> yeah, I think they tried to uh, hide some of the stuff that would be hard to animate. I think this is the first movie that they tried to use computer animation, too. Like with the ship and... There was some other stuff they used a little bit of computer graphics and it was kind of rudimentary but then like in Beauty and the Beast they used them a bit more of it with that the dinner scene where all the characters were dancing around the table and the chandelier and all that and then you know they started working it in and incorporating it in a little more each movie. Huh. Okay, now, this is going to be tricky, and I might have messed it up already, yup. <laughs> I'm trying to cheat and use my finger. It globbed out a little bit, guys, but I was trying to draw her shadow, the shadow of her hand. I don't think it's going to let me. Liz calling me. Let me answer. Yeah. Hello? My roommate's giving me a ring. Oh, In the picture, she had a shadow reflecting onto her um, fin, but I think maybe I should have left that off because now I'm regretting it. Uh, Oh well, you live and you learn. That's part of it. It's part of drawing. Like I said, very risky business trying to shade with pen. Yeah, I kind of wish I hadn't done that now. I wonder if I can use my... No. Hey, pencil's not going to save you. Eraser's not going to save you. <clears throat> it's okay. We trudge onward. Pens weren't really made for this type of shading. I'm almost done, guys. If you're still with me, thanks for sticking in there. I'm 
you guys shouldn't have shaded that <laughs> where I uh, was trying to shade where her hand was. Looks kind of odd. It's okay. I'm going to try to zoom down. That looks amazing. Thank you. I chose a little bit different positioning for those lines, so I'm going to go back and erase the ones I had in pencil. Now you got to watch some of these pencils you or pins that you use because they will smear or glob out. And so you gotta watch out to that. Yeah. I'm just trying to give this one an overall little shading situation. Just so it doesn't look so flat. Okay, let me see. A little bit there for the arm. Give the arm some dimension. to look at armpit hairs. Yeah, you can't make the Little Mermaid look like she's from uh, Asheville, North Carolina. <laughs> Are they known for uh, armpit hair? Yeah. Uh, We're going to get some comments from some people from Asheville. Sorry if there's any uh, hair hippies out there watching the video. But uh, that's my little Asheville comment. Was uh, There's a lot of hippies in Asheville. And I uh, was standing in a gas station one time. And this beautiful girl comes walking.